working on a 2016 Acura TLX with a 2.4 motor. We're going to do the rear brake replacement and I'm going to show you a step by step of how to do so. So the first step is as always safety first. Make sure you use jack stands. I'm going to be doing this job on the floor today just because all the lifts are being occupied. So I'm going to do the brake job on the floor. Safety first. Make sure you put jack stands on both sides of the vehicle. And now let's take off the rear wheels. Okay guys, so go ahead and get your wheels removed. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in the back of this uh, caliper here and I'm gonna remove the connector that controls the motor. So the, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just stick a uh, screwdriver here and just pry slowly like that. And at the same time, lift up this connector and the connector should just come off like that. And just put it out the way because we're not gonna needed we need all the space we can get so go ahead and uh, do that first now that you have that connector removed what you're going to do next is you're going to find two t27 torque bolts here this one and there's one on the um, adjacent side so it's going to be down here okay you're going to remove both of those because this cover here is going to have to come off to get to the screw mechanism inside to retract the caliper piston so first remove this is a t27 and the one that's adjacent to it which is down here okay i'm going to be using a uh well i only i got a t25 because i can't find my t27 at the moment but this should be fine this is the other one on the other side Hopefully you can see it there. Remove that one as well. Now that you have both of those bolts removed, you're going to remove this uh, parking brake, electronic parking brake assembly here. All you gotta do is just wiggle it and it should just come out like that. Okay, this has the uh, motor inside that applies a parking brake. Okay, so just put it to the side. Okay, once you have the motor out the way, you're gonna take a T47 torque socket and you're going to insert it on the area here where the um, electronic parking brake assembly gear there would assemble in here you're gonna just insert it like that and you're gonna turn it clockwise okay just until it stops with your fingers with your hands so just turn it clockwise like that what it's doing now, now you're retracting the caliper inward, okay? Like that. Once you turn that uh, torque socket clockwise until it stops, it gives you enough room to put a screwdriver there, okay? That's what you're gonna use to apply pressure or apply torque to, um, you know, uh, insert the piston inward. Okay guys, as you can see, the piston has been retracted Okay, now just to show you, I'm going to basically um, put a ratchet on here and do it counterclockwise just to show you that counterclockwise you're going to be bringing the piston towards the brake pad. I'm doing counterclockwise, look at the piston. You see how it's coming out? Okay, now if I do it counterclockwise, you see, it's uh, of course, you're not going to see a retract because that's why you need the screwdriver. You need to insert it so that you can, uh, you know, retract the caliper like I explained earlier. There you go. Okay. And that should uh, bring the caliper back. There you go, you see? Now the caliper has been uh, retracted again. Okay guys, now if this happens to you where you're trying to loose the, loosen up the caliper and you see the, the bolt spinning like that, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to insert um, a wrench or some pliers to hold this in place while you remove this uh, bolt there, okay? What I like to use is I like to use some pressure pliers here and just, uh, hold this clamped up of course you don't need too much 
clamp pressure on here you don't need to you know grab it with extreme force or anything like that just enough so that the 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 bolt here can be stationary while you can remove the the caliper bolt Once you get both of those bolts removed, you're going to remove the caliper, okay? And never let a caliper hang by the brake hose because you can damage the brake hose. So I'm going to basically get a hanger or anything that has hooks that you can put on the caliper so that it won't hang by its own weight and it can hang on something else. So I'm gonna put it on this here. And now you can see that it's not hanging it's being held on by this. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Okay guys, next step you're gonna do is you're gonna take a 17 millimeter socket and you're going to remove the uh, caliper bracket right here. Okay, and also the other one. Okay, so go ahead and remove both of those 17 millimeter bolts. I'm actually gonna use a wrench because upon putting the, the ratchet on there, it wasn't enough room for the socket to sit well on the uh, on the bolt so I'm gonna just use a uh, 17 millimeter long wrench to remove it just put it on like that there go. the next thing we're gonna do guys we got to remove this uh, Phillips head bolt here okay this can get very corroded and it can be very difficult to take out so if you try to use a Philip Phillips head screwdriver most of the time you won't be able to take it out or you're gonna strip it so I'm gonna use an impact tool like this okay which is very very handy because what you can do is you can choose your your head which here is gonna be a Phillips head and you're going to put it on the on the um, bolt there and it, you see how this has some some spring tension here what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a hammer okay you're just gonna hit it while at the same time twisting it to its um, loosening position so you're gonna go like this there you go you see now the Phillips head bolt loosened just by me giving it a couple of hits and now just as simple as that you're able to take this out okay guys so I am gonna be replacing the rotors on both sides in the rear why because the customer wants to I told them that the original rotors are still you know good enough to cut and uh, resurface but he wants new rotors, so I'm gonna put new rotors. Um, <clears throat> this is the new rotors that came from the local parts stores, but they like to put this oily substance, I believe pro for preservation, on the shelf on both sides. You see, this kind of oily substance. And uh, I don't really like putting the rotor on with that on, that you know oily material on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just use some brake cleaner you know, spray all around both sides and then I'm just going to you know dry it up with a towel and that should remove all the uh, all that stuff on there okay before you install the rotor make sure you get you know a wire brush or if you have anything you know air power tools like a bristle brush or anything like that wire brush just make sure you get uh, clean the <clears throat> this area here as much as you can Okay, get all that corrosion out. Okay, it doesn't have to be completely spotless, but just any corrosion that has built up. Just loosen it up before you install the rotor. Okay, I got the rotor installed. I've tied up that um, Phillips head bolt there. Okay, now before you install the caliper bracket, make sure that you inspect the slide pins here. Make sure they're mobile and able to move freely with no um, effort. Uh, in case they are seized, then you're gonna need to uh, relubricate them um, by taking them out, you know, cleaning them up, relubricating them. But in my case, they are great. Make sure you clean up the hardware here, okay? 
See, I'm gonna be using the same hardware kit and I'm gonna be using the same brake pads because the brake pads are actually in very good condition, meaning that they're pretty new. So um, the customer just wanted to replace the rotor. Uh, so I'm gonna use the same brake pad. So make sure you clean up the hardware kit there before you install the caliper bracket. Okay guys, make sure that the bolts for the caliper bracket and the bolts for the actual caliper if they had Loctite on them from the previous installation or from the manufacturer, make sure you clean it up, okay? Make sure you clean that Loctite out of the thread because you're gonna have to re-apply uh, Loctite before you install these bolts. So I'm gonna apply some thread locker, okay? On the thread, on, in this area here, okay? Before I put it on the uh, caliper bracket. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay guys, don't go overboard with the Loctite or with the thread locker, okay? You don't need to put it all in the thread because the only part that actually grabs on the thread is the end. So just put it on the ends and I'm gonna go ahead and install the caliper bracket. Okay, so these are the brake pads. Look, they're basically brand new. Okay, so I go ahead and clean them up and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sand them. Okay, I'm gonna get just some sandpaper in a flat surface. Okay, make sure it's in a flat surface. And then I'm just gonna run the pad back and forth like this. Okay, until I can get this pad smooth and remove this top layer okay before I send the other one I just want to let you take a visual between the sanded one and the non sanded one okay I just want to remove that that layer that may have um, stuck with the original rotor um, so that's why I want to sand them so I'm gonna go ahead and do this one and go ahead and get ready to install them okay I got my caliper bracket installed torqued down okay I got my brake pad sanded because they're pretty good condition. Okay, now, before I put the brake pad on, I'm going to get some uh, either brake grease, brake lube, or in my case, I'm gonna use some anti-seize. To me, either works. You're going to get the brake pad and you're gonna apply some anti-seize in this area. Not a lot, you don't need a lot, okay? On both sides. Because you need to grease up or you need to, um, any, part of the brake system that is constantly moving you need to lubricate just so that you can prevent noise in the future or even as you install meaning right after you install it so just maneuver the antices all around because since this goes here you know it's gonna go constantly like this okay so you just want to provide some lubrication on those areas like I say you don't need a lot you don't need a lot so don't go overboard just need about that much and go ahead and install it now the brake pad that has the wear indicator which is this okay goes on the inside okay this pad the one that doesn't have the wear indicator goes on the outside this is the other one Make sure you wipe off the excess off your fingers so that you won't get it all over the components. Okay guys, the brakes are installed, the brake pads. Okay, now the caliper. Okay, before you install the caliper, make sure that you clean this area up with a wire brush. The one that you use to clean this here, just use it and clean all that dust up and then you're gonna get some anti-seize either on the brush or on your finger and you're just gonna 
lubricate this area here like that okay and you're also gonna do the other side like I say you always need lubrication on areas that are constantly moving which is in this case are the pads and the caliper so apply thin layer of brake grease brake lube anti-seize in my case and now you're ready to install the caliper apply a tiny amount of thread sealing or a loctite on the caliper th uh, bolts as well not a lot I went and go ahead and uh, clean the previous just put a little bit like I said a little bit goes a long way and now I'm gonna put the caliper on okay I got the caliper installed got these tightened these may move here when you tighten it up so again just like you removed it get some pressure pliers or some uh, pliers and just hold this area at the same time that you're tightening the bolt now remember guys we still have this motor we need to put back in place so before you do that as you can see the distance from the pad to the caliper it's a pretty good distance away so what I'm gonna do before I install that um, motor is I'm gonna take my T47 and I'm going to uh, put it on here on the back again okay and I'm gonna do counterclockwise so that the piston can come outward okay so let's see if I can do it with my hand as you can see look at the piston see how it's coming out okay now when you feel pressure when it comes out and you feel pressure that means that the piston is already touching the caliper and that's not what we want what we want is let's see so I'm tightening it up okay I already feel pressure Okay, and now once you feel that pressure, you're going to release a little bit. So you're going to go clockwise again to retract it. That should be enough. That way, when I put everything back and I, you know, go ahead and apply the brakes before I start the vehicle, I'm going to apply the parking brake and the parking brake should self adjust. Okay, because it's only a small distance compared to it being all the way to the back. Okay, so make sure you uh, pull the caliper out by turning this counterclockwise bring the caliper piston out until it reaches contact which you're gonna feel the pressure on your ratchet or if you're doing it by hand once you feel that pressure of the piston contacting the caliper then you're gonna go clockwise and just retract it a little bit so you can get that that uh, small contact there okay I'm gonna go ahead and put the motor back on this one make sure you lubricate this seal here right here so you can see with my finger okay before I put the motor back on I'm going to let you know that you need to uh, relubricate this seal here see that seal right there clean it up okay and then you're going to lubricate it the o-ring here I'm gonna use some grease okay I'm just gonna apply it all around so that when you put the motor back on it can go in and not damage the seal because it's too dry so go ahead and do it all around let's go ahead and put this motor in place now at the position you left it in it should just go in pretty smoothly let me put it get it in place so as you can see I'm aligning it to where the screw will be or the bolt will be placed and then just just give pressure there we go yes there you go you see it uh now it's flush okay you might need to just wiggle it a little bit from side to side but it should really just go in pretty smooth Okay, now I can put those bolts back on. Okay, we got the uh, motor installed back on the caliper. We're gonna go ahead and tighten these um, Torx uh, bolts here.
Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put both wheels back on, okay? Tighten the wheels, and then I'll let you know what you're gonna do next. Okay guys, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to apply the brake as if I was doing a normal brake job, okay? I'm gonna crank the vehicle, then I'm gonna apply the parking brake. Okay, as you can see, applied. Release it. I would just do this a couple of times. Make sure it's operational. Okay, and of course you can verify this by, you know, making sure that the that the system actually disengage and engage. But I can kind of hear the motors working. So um, yeah, guys, we just successfully uh, did the brake service for the rear. Okay, uh, if you really like this video and it was very helpful to you, make sure you subscribe to my channel, make sure you leave a comment, um, and let me know of any future videos you would like me to make. And also, if you look down in my video in one of the uh, uh, clickable buttons under the video, there's going to be a, a, a sign that says Give Thanks, and that's basically a small donation in case this video helped you out a lot, and it just makes me keep making videos for you guys, and, uh, and yeah, so... If you can do that, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much, and continue working and continue riding. Thank you so much.